everyone, Amber here. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, today we're going to be sewing up my pattern. It's called the Eileen Pool Tote. It's named after my mom. Uh, so this is what it looks like. This is the bag that we are going to be sewing up in the video. It has um, two exterior mesh pockets with fold over elastic on top, uh, a middle slip pocket using clear vinyl, it has straps with webbing, a vinyl bottom. On the other exterior side, there is a slip pocket, zipper pocket combo, again with the webbing. I've also added a cross body strap. I know with sometimes going to the beach, I like to carry a lot, so uh, it's really convenient to not have to have everything just in my hands. Uh, inside, it's all waterproof canvas as well. There is a zipper pocket, and in the pattern, I include the SVG, and I show you in the video how I import it and use my Cricut to cut that. Uh, and on the other side, there is a slip pocket that I just split down the middle. Um, so this has a ton of adaptions. It's a quite large bag. I find it perfect for um, holding a few towels, my book. There's so many different pockets and the cool thing is that you could adapt this so many ways. Um, so just to show you uh, on, here's the crossbody strap. Let me back up so you can see. So I'm 5'2", so it's adjustable. You can make it as high or low as you want. And then the way that the carry straps are written, if you were to put it on your shoulder. For me, it's like the perfect length, but you could always adapt it. Uh, so this pattern was written for waterproof canvas and vinyl. So it does not need to be interfaced at all. Um, saves time and that's something that I really appreciate. And I'll show you another one that I did. If you decide to purchase the pattern, this is the bag that I used um, for all the full color photographs throughout the um, throughout the written pattern. And again, it still has the same pockets. It's the, written the same way, the slip pocket inside, zipper pocket. Uh, but for the exterior of this one, this is a cotton canvas. So you can use other materials. But if you were going to use cotton canvas, I would definitely interface it with at least like an SF 101 or something similar. But yeah, so I hope you really enjoy the pattern. Uh, the video is lengthy, but I go through everything, cutting out all the pieces. I explain how I cut the SVG on my Cricut and I really break down everything into like small steps. Uh, so along the bottom of the description, there's going to be timestamps. So please feel free to jump ahead if you don't need all the help. But uh, as always, my goal is that I always hope that a beginner bag maker could like pick up my pattern and really make something that they're proud of. Uh, so if you haven't already, please feel free to like, subscribe, uh, comment. So for the Eileen pool tote that I'm going to be sewing up today, I plan on making mine extremely bright and colorful. So you are going to need vinyl. I am using this teal for the bottom. You can also uh, use a 12 inch roll as long as the roll is exactly 12 inches. Uh, I also have this other roll of vinyl because I'm going to use this bright pink for the inside zipper uh, overlay piece. But you could always use the same vinyl you don't need multiple I have two different colors um, of waterproof canvas I'm using this black for the exterior and this bluish color for the interior I'm also going to add a colorful pocket on the outside according to the pattern but I am going to make it two different colors. So I really enjoy using up scrap pieces that I have. So I'm going to use this light green for the outside pocket and the pink for the top of that pocket. You will also need some mesh. I am gonna use this neon green. 
And to go with the mesh, you also need uh, a piece of fold over elastic. And according to the pattern, I also put a clear pocket between the two mesh pockets. So I am going to be using this plant leaf TPU. I do carry this in the shop, but we are currently sold out of this. We have more on order. And I'm also going to be adding mesh and fold over elastic to the shop. Uh, I do have this green fold over elastic listed currently. You are also going to need almost six yards of webbing. This is not the full cut. This is just the show for the video. Uh, this is one and a half inch wide seatbelt webbing that we carry in the shop. In order to make the bag, you do need one and a half inch wide because it covers the seams. If you are going to use one inch, you are gonna have to work with the measurements and adjust some of your pieces. I also using two different zipper tapes. I'm using this uh, black with glow on the dark thread for the outside. And I'm gonna use our green palm tree zipper pull. And for the inside pocket, I'm using our white over the rainbow with our pink flamingo. All of these are in our shop as well. I am gonna be using uh, Tex 35 groovy thread from Wizard Sistery. I sew on a domestic, so I actually use this in my um, top to go through the needle and in the bobbin. It works in my machine. I also have a seam ripper stiletto combo, some snips, uh, chalk. I'm a big fan of Taylor's chalk because it comes off so easily. And we do have some pieces that you need to be able to remove the marking. I also like this water soluble pen that works really great for me. The only thing I don't use it on is the webbing because sometimes it does not come off the webbing. I am gonna be sewing with a Microtex 9014 needle. And if you are planning to make the crossbody strap, you are gonna need uh, two one and a half inch D-rings, a one and a half inch slider, and two one and a half inch snap hooks. So, so if you are confident with a acrylic ruler and rotary cutter, uh, all the pieces are squares or rectangles. So I did provide a cut chart. However, when I first started sewing, I did not have these fancy tools, so it was much easier to just cut around a pattern. And for that reason, I also included all. Okay, so before I start cutting, I just wanted to show you this one piece where uh, if you need to attach, I always have letters and numbers, so you match them up. Usually it's in the center, but for this one, because we have box corners, uh, the A9 and the A10 are on the edges. So I just wanted to show you that in case you have uh, trouble figuring it out, but there's also a picture in the pattern as well that shows you. And my paper's been stored, so it's a little bit crumbly, but I'm going to use the ruler to help hold it in place. And I'm just lining it up with the edge on the bottom uh, that way I do not have to cut the bottom edge. So you are going to need four of these pieces, two lining and two exterior. So I am going to do my exterior from the black. which this piece um, I have already cut some out of, so I will need to use new yardage. So this is our first exterior. All right, I'm gonna cut my second exterior piece 
and the waterproof canvas that I am using is actually the Pro Tough brand um, from Walmart found in their fabric section. It is similar to Otter Tech's in that it has the uh, plasticky PVC backing. I'm going to set this piece aside and grab my lining fabric. Okay, so I am using this blue for the interior. Actually a lot brighter than it looks on camera. But this is also the same uh, Pro Tough waterproof canvas. And for this pattern, I specifically wrote it using waterproof canvas, uh, knowing that it's a pool tote, um, but also because I don't have to interface anything. I'm also not going to interface my vinyl. You can if you want it a little bit stiffer and more structured, but I like being able to just throw my pool tote in the back of the car, keep it there for storage, and then have it when I need it. So if you are using um, cotton or regular cotton canvas or any other fabric that is not stiff like this waterproof canvas, you are going to want to use an interfacing on it. As you can see, I've already um, used this waterproof canvas before so I have to find a spot where the whole thing fits and I save every little piece of my scraps because I never know when I'll use it even like small pieces I'll use to put behind snaps or um, rivets to help reinforce it So I am using this blue for the interior. Actually a lot brighter. Okay, next up is pattern piece B. This is for the bottom. Uh, so I am using vinyl to give it a little bit more structure. And you are gonna wanna cut two of these pieces. Next up is pattern piece B. This is for the bottom. Uh, so I am using... Okay, so pattern piece C is the mesh pocket. And we need two of them. B is the clear vinyl. Uh, this is TPU. So it comes rolled with this netting and you don't want to store it. You don't want to unroll this and take this out. This is to help the print. It's printed on the backside where it's white. Um, in heat, it can transfer. So when you're storing your vinyl, you always want to leave this uh, on the roll. And we only need one of these. Okay, so I have my one piece. We're gonna set the rest to the side. Okay, next is piece F. And this is going to be for the exterior zipper pocket. And I want my bag to be bright and colorful. So I am doing it pink. 
my rotary blade needs to be changed, so I'm having to push really hard to cut everything. Okay, and we only need one piece of piece F because our next piece is piece G, and that is going to be the lining for both the top and the bottom. And I always try to match everything up to the edges and be as least wasteful as possible. Okay, now we have our piece G. Okay, next we have pattern piece H, which is the exterior uh, slip pocket lining and you'll see as you're making the pattern or following along that the outside zipper pocket is a slip pocket slash zipper pocket combo so this pattern piece H is actually going um, behind both okay. And pattern piece I, this long one, is the interior slip pocket. Um, so I am going to make it two-toned because you need two pieces, the inside and the outside. Uh, so I'm going to cut one piece. This is going to be, I'm going to use the black, I think, for the lining piece. And I'm not gonna um, set this part aside because I need that for the other side of the lining. Okay, so I'm using the same green. This is gonna be my exterior and I'm actually cutting with the wrong side up right now because this is a brand new uh, piece of waterproof canvas and it is rather large, the cuts. They have, I'm not sure the whole length, but I got two yards and they're quite wide. Uh, so it's easier for me to maneuver it on the table right now by just folding the top part back. Okay, so this is gonna be the outside of my interior slit pocket and then we have pattern piece j this is going to be the interior the lining for the interior zipper pocket uh, and of course you can customize this any way that um, you want i have actually left it off the zipper pocket and then said have done a mesh slip pocket inside you could um, do two zipper pockets whatever whatever suits your fancy that's the nice thing about this bag there's a lot of ways to adapt it and the same with the exterior you could do mesh pockets all on the outside instead of the zipper pocket or vice versa All right, so this is our lining for piece J. Our last piece is piece K, which is the um, zipper overlay, but I'm gonna use my Cricut to cut that and I'm gonna show you how. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to cut the SVG using, well, I use a Cricut. So you are gonna click upload and then upload image and you are going to find your folder. So it's called Zipper Overlay SVG and click it and then hit open. Uh, so it is already pre-sized for you. It is at this diagonal angle. So that way, if you are printing this, it fits on the eight and a half by 11 letter size paper. 
So all you have to do is click upload and then click it again to add to your canvas. And again, it's at this angle and the sizing only shows nine inches, um, but that's because it's measuring the box at the diagonal. So once you go to cut it, it's gonna be the correct size. So I am gonna click make it and I want to save as much space as possible. So I'm going to rotate it on my mat and move it up to the top. So you could see here that um, if you're looking at your mat, that the edge comes to about um, 10 and a half inches. So that is correct. So don't panic if you see the other size. Um, so I have a Cricut Air 2, so I'm gonna hit continue and it is going to find my Cricut through Bluetooth. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to cut the SVG using, well, I use a Cricut. So you're gonna click upload and then upload image and you are going to find your folder so it's called okay so like I said I have the air 2 and I have turned this dial to custom so that is how I got it to the metallic leather setting and I'm gonna use this gorgeous pink. Uh, so I'm going to put it on my mat face down. And I'm not gonna lay it right up against the top because uh, you can see that it's printed a little bit further down. So I am going to give it a little space and I'm going to put it face down on the mat. Um, if you have the maker, I don't think that matters, but uh, for the Air 2, it is cuts much better. And I'm not using the deep cut or deep blade or whatever. This is just the normal blade. And as this rolls in, I'm going to have to pay attention because it might give me a problem. So I'm going to hold it. All right. So now that my light is blinking, let's see how it goes. I'm hoping that my mat is sticky enough. I might have to use a new mat. Because it's the leather setting, it's cutting twice. You can see it's kind of pulling up. I probably could have did a lesser setting or if my mat was stickier. Oh, I guess actually it's cutting three times. So you could try a setting that is not as um, deep. I'm actually going to pause it because I think it might have already cut through. It cut through enough? No, I guess not. So if you pause your machine, you can let it, um, it will pause exactly where you are and as long as you don't unload it, it will pick up where it left off. So I'm just pushing the C button again. And like I said, if I had a new mat, this would cut better, but I think it is fine. I use my mats till the last possible second. All right, and then before I eject it, I like to test by pulling it and yeah that cut fine because once you eject it you're never going to get the lines to match up again but if it didn't cut all the way through you could just hit the C button again and it would cut in the exact same spot all right and then so peel it off oh there's one little spot all right and now I have my zipper overlay cut out 
perfectly. So I hope that was helpful if you like using SVGs. Uh, so at the measurement given in the pattern, you are going to mark across a line. And I have a dark fabric, so I am using chalk. Oop. I'm trying to maneuver around the camera. All right, there we go. And you can also save yourself time right now uh, by marking the center. It's okay if you use something permanent for this line because it is uh, going to be hidden. So you are going to do that for both of your exterior outside pattern piece A's. I'm just making sure I have it marked on the edge so that I am marking the correct center. Now we're going to prep our mesh pieces. So we are going to sew along the bottom of uh, each side or one side of both pieces and we are not going to back stitch in the beginning and in the pattern it tells you the seam allowance and I also have my uh, dial on my machine set to the largest stitch length so for me that's a four and you are just going to sew across And you're not going to back stitch at the end either. And so for me, you can see that my machine kind of gathers the material uh, for me. But if your machine doesn't do that, you could grab one of the tails and pull it and it will gather it. So our mesh is cut slightly wider than what it needs to be because we you know, want it to be a pocket when we put stuff in there. So we are only gathering the bottom. So that's one and we're going to do the same exact thing for the second piece of mesh. And because mine are gathered, I'm going to trim my threads and set these aside. Now we are going to attach the mesh to each side of our clear vinyl. Uh, so if you are using a print, you want right sides together. And I'm going to attach to the edge. Um, I don't think the mesh has a wrong or right side. Um, but for me, like how the mesh curves like this, I'm putting like the curve towards me. But honestly, I'm not really sure if it matters. What's more important is that the vinyl is right side facing you. And I didn't mention clips as something you need in the video, um, but I prefer them over pins, especially with uh, clear vinyl. And we are going to attach on each side so I am going to do both sides at once. So now when I sew this, the seam allowance is given in the pattern and I'm still going to use a large stitch length, like my top stitch length. Um, and, and I am going to back stitch at the beginning and the end, but this will be covered. So there's going to be more stitches going through it. And I'm sewing with my mesh up because the vinyl can be a little bit sticky and normally I would use a Teflon foot, but if I sew with the mesh up, it makes it easier and I don't need to switch out my foot. Okay, so make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end of each side. So now 
now we are going to attach our fold over elastic. Uh, so you're going to find the center of that. And for me, my fold over elastic, they don't really look that different on each side. So I'm just going to pick the side that I like. Now we are going to flip. If you were sewing like this before, make sure that you flip your mesh out. So the uh, seam allowance is pointed towards the mesh and it's behind. And I am just gonna fold this in half to find the center. And I'm just gonna make the tiniest little snip so I can see where my center is. Okay, so now what you are going to do is you are going to attach your fold over elastic at that center point. So it can be a little bit tricky lining it up, making sure it's even, especially with the clear vinyl, because if it's not in the center, you're gonna see it on both sides. Okay. So once you find the center there, you're then going to attach uh, both ends to the end of uh, both ends of your uh, fold over elastic to the end of each mesh. Make sure that you are not twisting your your fold over elastic. Okay, and so why we clip the center and the ends is because our elastic is cut shorter than the length of our piece. Um, so what you can do, you can pull and clip this and help space it out, but I'm just going to do it uh, as I sew. For me, that is easier. I am not changing out my foot, but I am going to use a top stitch. So for again, that's for me, that's a four. And I'm going to do, um, I'm going to backstitch at the beginning and the end. So I just did the backstitch and what I'm going to do is as I'm sewing, I'm going to pull on the piece to straighten out the elastic. And this sometimes takes a little bit of practice. Um, so it, as this is fully stretched, I could probably clip it, but I'm just going to go with it. And as I'm sewing, I use the inside piece of my foot here um, as my guide for my top stitch. And you, you wanna make sure that your mesh is all the way up to the center so that you are catching it as you top stitch. Once I get to my center, I'm going to unclip it and again pull from the end. Make sure everything is centered in your fold over elastic. And then I'm going to continue. And for this, the vinyl sticks a little bit. You could probably put something on your plate. Um, like wax paper to help it go, but it's not too terrible for me, so I'm not gonna worry about it if my top stitch here isn't quite as even. And especially because once you're past that clear part, my machine doesn't give me any trouble over the mesh. So I use the printed vinyl. Um, so I had to really be mindful when I was top stitching. And you, you just wanna like check. I usually just pull or flip it over to make sure that I, oh, you can see right here. I miss the plastic here. So I am just gonna 
tuck that in. I don't know. I either have to pull it all out or tuck it in and go over it. I think what I'm going to do is unpick it from here because our seams are going to be hidden and just re top stitch this center piece. Um, but if you didn't have the clear vinyl, I mean with a print, you could flip and use your better side, whichever one has the top stitch. Um, so I'm going to pick that apart off camera. Okay, so I wanted to show you this um, in case you also make a mistake with the binding. Um, you can start from the end of the end points and re top stitch. So I am going to stretch my fold over elastic and I'm laying it flat on the table so that way I can really see that it's in both sides. And I am actually going to clip since I'm redoing this to make sure that I am catching all of the clear vinyl. Um, so again, like I've said, the I'm gonna backstitch at the beginning and the end because it is going to be hidden on this seam here. And I'm still pulling on the elastic. Um, that helps it sew better on my end. And I guess I could do this for the first time, but I didn't think about it. You could put your finger here to make sure you're feeling that the elastic is to your center. I mean, not your elastic, your clear vinyl is to the center of your fold over elastic. And then I just backstitched right there because again, that will be hidden. So if you have trouble with your uh, fold over elastic, don't panic. You see how I made the error and we were able to fix it. Now we're going to attach the mesh and clear vinyl pocket piece that we just made to our exterior piece. Uh, so the first thing that you want to do is find your center of your clear vinyl, if you haven't already done that. And you are going to line it up with the center of your exterior piece that you made. And you're gonna line it up exactly on the line that you drew. And I'm literally just using a piece of tape to hold it in place because I don't want to have to pin it through this clear vinyl. Okay, now your next step is on each end, you are going to clip your mesh uh, just so it holds it in place. And you can see that it um, pulls a little bit because mine is gathered. So as we are sewing, we will like straighten it out. If yours didn't gather, you could also, you might need to do pleats here, which I just make at the sewing machine. Um, but you could like plan your pleat out right now. It really depends how much your material was gathered. And this is just so that way when we sew it and uh, later on when our bag is done and you put some items into these pockets, you want them to have some give and have some stretch. All right, so now we are gonna take this to the machine and we are going to baste along the bottom here. So I just use a long uh, stitch length and I sew about, a quarter inch or eighth of inch above this white line 
Uh, it will all get hidden. You could even sew over the line that you already did where you were um, gathering your mesh. So we are gonna take it to the machine, we are gonna do that. Once we do the bottom, I am also going to sew, like flatten this out and sew up along both sides here, along your clear vinyl. Um, just that regular stitch length, it just helps it hold the pockets in place and that will be hidden. Okay, so I'm back at my machine. I'm gonna start along one bottom end and I am just going to base our entire mesh and clear vinyl piece in place. And I do want it lined up uh, with that chalk line or the line that you marked previously. I used uh, scotch tape here, which peels up fairly easily. My foot might stick a little bit with the clear vinyl. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I am going to, I have my needle down and I am gonna switch out to a Teflon foot. I probably should have did that before. Oh, you know what, I don't know if this is gonna work. Because I have, since I have the needle down, it doesn't fit through that foot. Let's see if I can finagle. There we go. So I am going to carefully hold this in place, hand crank the needle up, and now I can slide my regular foot out put this needle down, hand crank, and keep going. And my Teflon foot works really well with the TPU vinyl. It should go over the mesh too, so it may help to switch that out ahead. I just when I get to the mesh again I help it stay down yeah and my Teflon foot is going over the mesh no problem actually going to sew up um, starting at the bottom sew up the sides on the ends of the mesh and up through the middle all of these will be hidden so I just do it at an eighth of an inch just to hold it in place so when I am assembling later on it's not Flopping every which way. And I'm starting at the bottom uh, just so it works out any like ripples on its own. All right, so now we are going to take one of our straps. It is already cut to the length given in the pattern and we are going to prep it. So I am lining up the bottom edges 
and I'm making sure that it is not, I'm like pulling it out far enough to make sure that it is not twisted. So we are going to measure the distance given in the pattern and you want to use a um, removable something that's removable so again I'm going to use chalk so I'm lining up both um, of my strap ends at once I am marking a line on the edge with my chalk. That is important because we are going to be sewing up to that chalk line. Now we are going to attach these to the bag. Um, I am going to use double-sided tape. I forgot to mention that in the list of suggested items. So I have a domestic and it will gum up my needle. So I am going to just measure, estimate a piece. I don't want it going all the way to the end and I don't want it touching that white line. Um, so I just estimate it. And we are going to stick it to the back of our strap. And I'm gonna put it right down the center if it's right down the center, it will not get in um, the top stitch line that we're gonna do. So it's, your needle should never touch it. And I'm going to do the same exact thing for the other side. And I do each strap, I prep them separately as I'm going. You could prep the other one, we're gonna sew it the same exact way. Uh, so you could prep both now if you wanted. Okay, so now I have grabbed my exterior piece with the clear vinyl and the mesh. We are going to attach our strap. So you want to make sure that you have it so it is not twisted. And in the pattern, I give the measurement. You are gonna measure so much in and so much above. Uh, so I do not want my strap in my bottom seam. Um, so I'm going to first peel this off. Sometimes it's hard to get. Okay. And I'm going to, following the pattern, so much from the bottom and place it all the way up along the edge of my ruler. So we are going to take this to the machine and we are going to top stitch. And I'm gonna start from the bottom. Uh, I left all this in the pattern. This is all going to be hidden, but for me it's important because I load up my bags and I wanna make sure that it has as much strength as possible. So we are gonna start at the bottom and top stitch one eighth an inch all the way around across where our chalk marker is and down the other side. And I actually do a second row of top stitching a quarter inch in on each side. And we are gonna do the same exact thing. I'm gonna take my ruler, make sure our measurements are correct. Oh, you can see I, there we go. You wanna make sure the bulk of your pocket is not gonna be hidden. So we want it to be able to stretch. And then again, I'm just double checking my strap to make sure that it is not twisted because I've definitely done that before. And I am aligning this strap 
the same exact way all the way up along the acrylic ruler. And we are gonna top stitch this side at the machine as well. And as you can see, our seams where the clear vinyl meet the mesh will be completely hidden. Okay, um, at my machine, I switched my Teflon foot back from my regular presser foot. I'm gonna top stitch an eighth an inch along the edge all the way up to our chalk marking, come back around and I'm gonna do a second line at a quarter of an inch in, um, all at top stitching uh, stitch length. Um, at my machine, I switched my Teflon foot back from my regular presser foot. I'm going to top stitch an eighth an inch along the edge all the way up to our chalk marking, come back around and I'm going to do a second line at a quarter of an inch in, um, all at top stitching uh, stitch length. So now we are going to build our exterior pocket piece. Uh, so this is going to be my outside color, this green, and I cut my zipper longer than the pocket just to give myself some wiggle room, and I've already attached the uh, zipper pull. So we are going to base this right side of the zipper tape facing right side of the exterior piece of fabric. And I'm just using my regular uh, presser foot to base this in place. And when you get to your zipper pull, I wanna stop with my needle down, lift the presser foot and slide the pull forward. Uh, this will help so you don't get the bubble in the zipper tape and you have a nice, even zipper. Now we are going to take our lining piece E and place it right side down, matching up the top fabrics. And we are gonna sew this in place at 3 8 inch seam allowance. Now, my zipper foot is just metal. My Teflon foot, which I like to use for um, when I'm using waterproof canvas, um, I don't think, yeah, it's, it's too wide here. It's gonna get in the way of the zipper. Uh, so I am gonna use just the regular zipper foot but you may notice um, it does like to stick to my waterproof canvas. So I'm gonna use a larger stitch length and that will help. Oh yeah, see, it's already bunching. I'm wondering if maybe I can make it work on the other side by using the zipper foot, I mean the Teflon foot. Yeah, see how much this is bunching. Oh, well, 
I'm just gonna roll with it. It'll probably work out okay. So if you have a Teflon foot and you're using waterproof canvas, I highly recommend it. So if I flip it over, you can see that it's a little bit off, but I can just trim the edges. I'm not gonna stress about it. So we are going to flip it so our wrong sides are facing each other, and then we are going to top stitch it. So for top stitching, I'm switching out to my regular presser foot because I use the inside uh, little circle or oval to help guide where I'm doing my top stitch length. Okay. I'm gonna make sure I pull this nice and tight. Stopping and moving my zipper pull out of the way. And then continuing on. So you can see that because my um, zipper foot caught a little bit, it's a little bit extra over here. But I'm just gonna trim down all the edges and trim my zipper tape to the edges as well. Okay, so now we're gonna take lining piece G and we are going to baste our top of the zipper to the top of the lining piece. And we want the right side of the waterproof canvas or your lining fabric against the wrong side of the zipper. And that's because this is going to be the lining of the zipper pocket. So when this uh, zipper is open, oh, sorry, I thought you could see. Uh, so when this zipper is open, you can see that this is the right side of the fabric. This is also the right side. So it's very important that you clip this in place with the right side facing the wrong side of the zipper. And then I am just going to base that in place. Okay, so now we are taking our uh, piece F. This is also exterior fabric, so I want me, my bag to be bright and colorful. So I'm using this pink, and we are clipping it right side of the fabric down. So right side of the fabric is touching the right side of the zipper tape. And when I'm uh, clipping mine, I move my pull out of the way because just like when you're sewing, if you don't move it, there'll be a little bit of a bubble. It's the same way with clipping. I find that uh, you could also get a bubble. And because I'm doing the zipper again, I have to switch out to my zipper foot. And I am sewing that at 3 eighths inch seam allowance. And 
this scrap that I'm using is water resistant canvas. So it does not have that uh, sticky PVC backing. So my zipper foot being metal is not giving me any trouble for this step. And now we are going to flip this up and I've been finger pressing everything because um, the waterproof canvas with the backing, you can press it. I just don't like the way it stinks. Um, so I just use my fingers to press it. So I'm switching back to my regular foot and changing my stitch length to a top stitch length. And we'll now top stitch this piece F up. So we're almost done. Okay, so now I have the pocket piece so far that we've built and uh, the pocket lining piece H. So I am going to clip this right sides down facing the right side of the top fabric. And I don't have to worry about moving my zipper pull because there's enough space and I am gonna sew at the seam allowance given in the pattern. And I switched to my Teflon foot already and you'll see the difference sewing with this Teflon foot really makes for my machine when I'm sewing waterproof canvas. So you can see it didn't like bunch or ripple. The stitches are all uh, even. So whenever I can, I try to use the Teflon foot. And I am going to switch out back to my regular foot. Because now you are going to flip this lining piece over and to the back and we are going to top stitch this um, last step here. So again, I'm just using my fingers to help press it to the back and I am going to clip it in place. And this is important because that piece, the black piece that I just added, that is now becoming the slip pocket lining. And I'm gonna top stitch probably a little bit deeper, maybe like quarter of an inch. So this completes our exterior pocket. We open it, we have the lining here. This is the correct waterproof canvas side. So now we are going to attach this to our main panel piece in a similar manner to how we attach the vinyl and the mesh pocket. 
Okay, so similar to how we attach the mesh and vinyl pocket, we are gonna take the other exterior piece and you are gonna find your center. So I just fold mine in half. Um, I trimmed up the bottom to make it even, but you can see that my sides here, there's like, it's not quite even, but I'm not stressing about it because it is gonna be hidden by the straps. So as long as you find your center point, and line it up you are going to put it right on the white line and then you can use pins and pin it carefully along the edge or use tape here um, because I lined up my center I'm just gonna line it up at my machine but you don't need to worry if your sides are a little bit off because just like what we did with the other straps when we put the straps on this one it's they're gonna be hidden so don't panic too much if it's a little bit crooked. It happens, especially when you are working with so many layers. So now that I'm at the sewing machine, I have my centers lined up and I am going to sew this on about anywhere from an eighth to a quarter inch. Make sure you backstitch the beginning and the end. And I'm also going to sew up along the sides while I'm here just to hold it all in place. Okay, so now that we have our pocket, you are going to prepare your strap the same exact way that we did for the mesh and clear vinyl pocket. Um, so I am gonna mark it up and sew it on all off camera. You can go back to the previous section if you need a reminder of how to do it. And the measurements will cover up the edges of our pocket. Um, when you're sewing, just be a little bit mindful that this can be a little bit slippery, especially if you're using seatbelt webbing with how thick the edges are. All right, so now that you have attached the straps, uh, this pocket piece should be securely in place. And you might wanna double check before you get too far that you open it. It has your linings. And then the slip pocket also has the correct lining. So now we are going to add uh, our vinyl pieces to the bottom of our exterior panels. Now we are gonna prep our exterior vinyl pieces. This is pattern piece B. Um, so we're gonna flip it over to the back side. I am not interfacing my vinyl, um, and I'll show you why in a few minutes when we put it on the exterior. So we are gonna prep it by marking a line across the back and the measurement is in the pattern and you are going to do that along the top side of both pieces so not on the side that has the uh, box corner cutouts And I'm just using a water soluble marker, um, but you can use anything for this as you are not going to see it. Okay, so now we have our exterior pocket um, or panel and we are going to attach the vinyl. So you are going to line up, not the line you drew, but you are gonna line up the bottom of your vinyl with our original chalk line. So I am going to clip it on the sides and then when I'm sewing at the machine I will uh, help guide it. You could also pin along here if you wanted but just make sure that you are pinning below the um, 
line, the blue line, because you don't want any holes in your vinyl. So you are gonna do this for both uh, outside exterior pieces in vinyl, and we are gonna take it to the machine and we are gonna sew across the blue line or whatever color the line that you just drew. Okay, so now I'm at the machine and our piece is starting to get more bulky, especially with the um, webbing handles and everything hanging off. But I am going to align my needle right on that line that I drew and I'm going to use a regular stitch length for me that's two and a half and I'm going to stitch across the line. And as I'm sewing, I'm just, I did not pin mine. So I'm just making sure that the bottom of my vinyl stays lined up with that original chalk line that I drew on the fabric piece. Okay, so now I'm at the machine and our piece is starting to get more bulky, especially with the um, webbing handles and everything hanging off. But I am going... All right, so now that we have sewn our vinyl in place, and you might notice that it might be, like you can see it hangs over the edge. That's okay, you can just trim it later. Um, depending on how bulky your straps are, your pocket, anything like that could throw off your measurement a little bit. So now we are going to fold our vinyl down and you can clip it in place on the sides to help you. And we are going to take this to the machine and we are going to top stitch along here on the vinyl. Uh, once I top stitch it, I'm also going to base stitch all the way down on the side and along both um, bottom pieces. And this is another reason why I didn't interface the vinyl. Uh, some people might be like, well, this is such a waste of fabric. But like I said before, I load up my beach bags, my totes. So by keeping the straps sewn here and then basting these together, it's gonna actually lend more support to your bag and make it stronger. So again, you are gonna now fold this down Go to your machine and top stitch along both uh, vinyl pieces on each exterior side. Okay, so now I'm back at my machine. I have my dial set to four for top stitch. And because I'm working with vinyl, I attach my Teflon foot. Uh, so I am going to top stitch across here and then baste all along the edges. Okay, so now I'm back at my machine. I have my dial set to four for top stitch and because I'm working with vinyl. Now that I have stitched along the bottom, 
we are going to open this up and top stitch our seam. So on the back side, I am going to open it. It's called butterflying them. So I am going to stick my hand underneath and open up this whole seam. Um, the bag is so big, it does get a little bit difficult to manipulate, but you are now going to, once you open it to each side, top stitch along each side of your center seam and that top stitch will hold this um, your seam allowance sewn down okay so now I am top stitching this and I'm keeping my right hand underneath to help guide the seams and making sure that they are laying flat So it's very easy for the seam to just want to go back on itself. Okay, so now I am top stitching this and I'm keeping my right hand underneath to help guide the seams and making sure that they are laying flat. So it's very easy for the seam to just want to go back on itself. Okay, so now I am top stitching this and I'm keeping my right hand underneath to help guide the seam. Okay, I'm gonna do the next part right at my machine. So now we are going to fold right sides facing each other and you are going to line up the vinyl piece first. Because we want that vinyl to match up on each side. You can see here my vinyl piece hangs over a little bit, so I need to trim that. Okay, I'm going to clip the side together. Okay, and I am going to sew up along the side at the given seam allowance in the pattern. And I'm going to repeat for the other side. Okay, so now we are going to box the corners. We are going to pull it apart and we are going to open up our seam on the side and match up the center of our seam on the side with the seam on the bottom. This is getting so bulky to work with and I'm trying not to like bump the camera too much. Okay, so now I'm going to lay it on my machine just like this and I am going to sew a line here at the given seam allowance and then I'm going to sew a second line inside the seam allowance and that's just because there's vinyl down here and it will help so it doesn't pull. On your seam here that it is okay so now we are going to box the corners we are going to pull it apart and we are going to open up our seam on the side 
and match up the center of our seam on the side. Okay, so now we are going to box the corners. We are going to pull it apart and we are going to open up our seam on the side and match up the center of our seam on the side with the seam on the bottom. Okay, we are gonna uh, prep our D-ring connectors. I'm using webbing. So I am just putting it through here and I am going to top stitch as close to the D-ring connector as possible. just repeat for the other D-ring connector. So now we are going to attach our D-ring connectors. I have the um, exterior of my bag right side facing in. So I am going to open up the side seam. I butterfly it open with my fingers. And I am going to clip the D-ring in the pattern I give you a measurement of how far down I'm just kind of eyeballing it and you want it centered over your seam okay, and you're gonna take this to the machine and top stitch across or baste it on across here um, I'm using a regular stitch I think just to make it more secure and you could do a second line in the seam allowance if you'd like and you're going to repeat for the other side of the bag as well. Okay, so I've attached both D-rings. If you do not want the crossbody strap, you could leave this part off. Um, but I'm going to set this to the side because now we are going to work on our interior. Alright, so now we are going to start working on our interior. So I have my first lining. And the first thing I want to do before I forget is mark my centers on the top and the bottom. I forgot to do that on the exterior pieces, um, but you can do it after. I'm going to make sure I mark it on both. Because this will make it easier when we are lining everything up and sewing the exterior to the interior. So we are now going to attach our zipper overlay and I'm going to use double sided tape for this again. Um, I'm going to try to center it the best that I can and not use a whole bunch but um, because this may get into my needle. It's a much thinner piece. You might be able to use scotch tape to hold this um, in place like what I did before. Okay, so before I peel this, I am going to mark my center and let's see will this hold this kind of holds a 
the crease. So I'm just going to use the crease. So what I'm going to do is I give the measurement from the pattern or in the pattern and I'm going to line up my ruler at the given measurement and I am going to remove the um, double-sided tape, the backing. And I'm going to remove both the top and the bottom at the same time. You could do the top first and then the bottom. But Okay, and where I have that crease, I am going to line that up to my center point. And then I'm gently going to push down and my double-sided tape is going to hold that in place. So now I'm going to take it to the machine and I'm going to top stitch around the outside edge. Okay, so I'm at my machine and I still have my Teflon foot because I'm sewing on vinyl and I am going to top stitch around, but I'm not going to back stitch. I'm going to show you how I actually tie off these so you have a nice clean finish. Uh, so I'm adjusting to my top stitching length and I am just going to start sewing. I am not going to back stitch at the beginning. And you want to make sure you have a long enough tail that you can tie with later. I am sewing with um, double-sided tape underneath so if your needle does get gummy I can feel it getting a little sticky you can use um, like a cotton ball with some alcohol on it Okay, so I'm at my machine and I still have my Teflon foot because I'm sewing on vinyl and I am going to top stitch around, but I'm not going to back stitch. I'm going to show you how I actually tie off these so you have a nice clean finish. Uh, so I'm adjusting to my top stitching length and I am just going to start sewing. I am not going to back stitch at the beginning. And you want to make sure you have a long enough tail that you can tie with later. And I am sewing with um, double sided tape underneath. So if your needle does get gummy, I can feel it getting a little sticky, you can use um, like a cotton ball with some alcohol on it. Okay, before I set this aside, we have to do one more thing. Uh, this is where our zipper is going to go. So we have to cut out that piece. So I'm just gonna take my seam ripper and get a hole started. And then I will take scissors and cut out. You wanna be very careful. You wanna cut it behind the zipper overlay. So that way 
once you have cut out the center, you do not see any of this blue at all. It's hidden behind the overlay. So it'll look like, like that. Um, but you want to be very careful that you don't accidentally cut this overlay. So I'm going to finish cutting this out off camera. Okay, so now we are working with pattern piece J. This is our interior zipper pocket lining. And I have my zipper prepped. Uh, put the pull on already so I don't forget. And I cut it larger than it needs to be. And I'm going to trim it down later. So you are going to line up, this is the right side of the fabric, so you're going to put the wrong side of the zipper against the right side of the fabric. Okay. And I am going to baste it in place. Making sure that you're moving your pull out of the way so you don't get a bubble. Okay, so now you are going to take your zipper and I flipped it around. And we are going to line up the edges and we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So the right sides of our lining are facing each other, wrong sides facing out. to clip this and then uh, base this in place and trim my threads. All right, so now we have pattern piece J with our zipper and I grabbed my interior piece that we just prepped. Um, now to me, this is the hardest part. So we are going to stitch along the inside of our zipper overlay but only along the top part here. And that's important because you could accidentally sew through your pocket if you go all the way around. This is gonna be behind, but if you sew all the way around, you're gonna stitch your pocket closed. Um, and I've definitely done that before. So what we're gonna do is this is gonna go behind and I'm kind of gonna look and center the zipper and you wanna make sure your zipper pull is um, in between. You don't wanna accidentally stick, uh, sew your zipper pull to the side. And so you could use double-sided tape and tape it. I just like to kind of hold it with my hands and adjust it. So you can see now that I'm at the machine, I have it kind of lined up how I want it. And I am just gonna take my time and center the zipper. And so just like we, we did at the top, I am not going to backstitch. So I am going to Oh, and I definitely need to pull more thread. I'm not gonna have enough to uh, tie that knot after if I don't. So let me re-thread this real quick. So you definitely wanna make sure that you leave yourself plenty of room to work with the threads. All right, 
So I am going to put my needle down and I'm going to top stitch across. And again, I'm just gonna use my hand underneath to kind of hold this in place. Okay, so it's really important that you center your zipper pocket lining underneath because we are gonna have to sew up the edges. So if you put it too close, um, if, or if it's not center, you will not have enough space. So I have my needle down. I'm not going to back stitch, and I'm just gonna use my other hand to kind of guide this and keep it even. down, move my zipper pull out of the way, readjust if I need, and keep going. And I'm going to go a little bit past the edge because I'm going to top to stitch down the sides later. Okay. I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to make sure I leave enough thread that I can tie off later. All right, so now the next step is extremely important because you don't want to sew your zipper pocket together. We need to flip our pocket lining up and out of the way because this is going to sew this bottom edge here. It's going to hide the raw edge of the zipper but if we do not flip this pocket up, you will sew your pocket closed. And I've definitely done it more than once and it is not fun. And I'm just fixing my threads first because again, we want long tails. So I'm just gonna maneuver everything under the foot. Okay, so unfortunately, as I was um, filming this step, my camera died and I didn't notice it and I actually think it's like the hardest part of the pattern, so I'm going to try to re-explain. Uh, so I've... Okay, so unfortunately, as I was um, filming this step, my camera died and I didn't notice it, and I actually think it's like the hardest part of the pattern, so I'm going to try to re-explain. Uh, so I've centered my zipper behind the zipper overlay, so if I turn it over, you can see this is the uh, zipper lining, zipper pocket lining. So once it was centered, you could use double-sided tape on the top of this zipper to help hold it in place. I just kind of align it, maneuver it under my machine, and then start sewing. Uh, you just want to make sure that your zipper uh, is really centered because we're gonna have to sew up the sides and if you don't leave enough space you will not be able to fit here to sew up the side so you're gonna center it underneath and you're gonna sew this top stitch here on the top part of the zipper placket only so it's actually the second row of stitching but you are not gonna back stitch you are just gonna put your needle in so all the way to the end and take your needle out. Make sure you leave yourself enough tails because we are going to be tying this like what we did for the outside border. So this is really important. You're sewing only the top because now we need to sew this bottom stitch. And if you just sew the bottom stitch now, your zipper pocket will get sewn together. And I've totally done that before. So in order to sew the bottom, you need to take your zipper lining and pull it up. So once your zipper lining is up, then you are going to sew the bottom or, or right underneath your zipper here with a top stitch. Again, you are not going to back stitch at the beginning or the end if you don't want to see the back stitches. Some sewists just leave it like that but I want mine to have the top stitching on the sides. 
So what I do then is I flip my pocket down and I stick my needle in, again, leave myself a big enough tail and hand crank. So I'm starting at the hole where my first top stitch ended and I'm ending at that bottom top stitch. And I'm hand cranking so I can make sure that I align everything perfectly. So I'm gonna show you on this side here how I do that. So I'm again, I'm making sure my zipper pocket lining is down. I like fold this part here to help maneuver. And then another tip that I do is I do not put my presser foot down until I have lined up the needle hole. That's just so I can easily maneuver and adjust. Okay, so once I have the needle in the correct um, beginning hole of that top stitch, then I put my needle down and I am going to hand crank just so I have the accuracy. Okay, and then I slowly, I'm making sure I'm lining up the fabric and I am ending in the same hole that I had began that bottom top stitch. So again, I am leaving myself enough threads that I can tie. So you'll see I have threads here and on this side, I am going to flip to the back and I'm going to use the same trick as before, which was pulling up on the thread to create a little loop and then using my stiletto to pull through. And then I'm going to double check. So I was working on this top one. I have no more threads right here. So I have all four in the back. And then I just separate them uh, two and two. And I'm going to triple knot this. Again, you can add some fray check or some glue on the little knot. Sometimes I add the fray check if I'm using a cotton material, but with the waterproof canvas, I usually don't add anything. Okay, and so now I'm going to continue the same thing for this bottom part. Okay, and you can see I have one more string here. So we're gonna have to tie this twice is what's gonna happen. So the top part will have two because of how we sewed it. Um, we did not wanna sew through our zipper pocket. So we are going to knot it off here. And then, all right, so I have finished tying off the threads from the front zipper pocket. Uh, so now we have to sew up our sides. Now I purposely leave my zippers longer. Uh, you could trim them to the edge of your lining. Um, I'm just gonna leave them, you don't see them, and I feel like it's less of a chance that they will fray, because when you cut them, they can be rough like this. Uh, also to stop it fraying, you could just quickly run a lighter over them. Sometimes I don't like to do that because they are nylon and it does smell. Um, but yeah, so I just leave them longer, less likely for them to fray or give you any problem. So we need to close up our zipper pocket. So what I do is I just fold the lining in and then I line it up with the correct seam allowance and use my regular stitch length, back stitching at the beginning and the end. I still have my Teflon foot on 
because I am sewing the waterproof canvas and it does stick on my machine. And then you're gonna repeat for the other side. You're gonna fold this side up and then sew your lining closed. All right, now I have both of my piece I. These are the inside slip pocket. Uh, so we are gonna put them right side together. And if you had like a non-directional print or were using the same for the lining and um, the exterior piece of this slip pocket, you could just use one large piece and only have to sew one side. But because I'm using two different colors and I have also done it um, with a print, I have it so we are sewing both. So to save myself time, I am clipping both long sides and we are going to take this to the machine and sew at the seam allowance given in the pattern. And we are basically going to make a tube. We do not want to sew the edges because we need to be able to turn it inside out. All right, I'm back at my machine and I'm gonna sew both of those sides at the given seam allowance uh, using my regular stitch length. And I am using a Teflon foot because again, it's the back of the waterproof canvas. All right, so now that we have sewn both sides, we are going to turn this tube right side out. So it's easiest for me to just stick my arm all the way through and pull it inside out. And the reason that we had to sew both of the long sides is that this slip pocket, the bottom is not going to be caught in a seam to close those edges. Uh, so we had to sew both sides so that way our pocket is solid. And you wouldn't see the raw edges inside of the bag. Right, so take your time to smooth this out. Um, you can iron it if you want. Again, I'm not going to because I'm using waterproof canvas and I don't like the way it smells when you iron it. That PVC backing since it's plastic. I just try to avoid warming up anything plastic. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm running my hand across it and if you have directional fabric you want to clip along the top. I do not have directional fabric, so I just chose one side. And so now I have pinned it so it's nice and even, and I am going to top stitch along the top. So I'm going to use, again, still my Teflon foot and a larger top stitching. Um, a larger top stitching length. Okay, so now we are back at our my work table and I have the last interior lining, piece A. So we are going to measure at the measurement given in the pattern up from the top of the box corner cutout. So I'm measuring up from this top cutout. So we are going to align our pocket with the ruler. So you could um, either do that, but what I'm gonna do is I am going to draw a chalk line. I really love Taylor's chalk for this reason. It comes off so easy. And you can see that the way my waterproof canvas is, is kind of like tucking in 
So I'm gonna flatten it out, align it with the sides and that chalk line, and I am going to clip only the sides in place. You could maybe use pins here, um, but because I'm wa using waterproof canvas, I don't want to puncture. So I'm gonna clip both sides. And as I'm sewing this, I'm actually going to stick my hand inside the tube to help pun uh, push out this bottom here. And we are going to sew across the bottom at the given seam allowance. And you are gonna use a reg regular stitch length. You're, I would not use the top stitch length because this bottom seam is what is going to give this pocket all of its support. So the longer stitch length might be easier to break apart. So I'm gonna take this back to the machine and sew across the bottom. Okay, so I'm at my machine. I have the bottom of the pocket aligned with the chalk line I drew. I am going to back stitch in the beginning and I am going to stitch along the bottom using a regular stitch length and I'm going to actually, um, I unclipped one side because I'm going to put my hand inside as I sew to help pop out this bottom and make sure that it's truly aligned with that chalk line. And again, I'm using a regular stitch length so this seam has more support. Okay, so I'm at my machine. I have the bottom of the pocket aligned with the chalk line I drew. I am going to back stitch in the beginning and I am going to stitch along the bottom using a regular stitch length. And I'm going to actually, um, I unclipped one side because I'm going to put my hand inside as I sew to help pop out this bottom and make sure that it's truly aligned with that chalk line. And again, I'm using a regular stitch length, so this seam has more support. And I'm just sticking my hand in and help pushing out the seam. If you iron your stuff, you should not have this problem. Uh, but again, because I am not ironing my waterproof canvas, the seam wants to kind of go in on itself. All right, so now this makes one big slip pocket um, and I'm going to divide it in two. So I'm gonna do that by lining up the edges getting that crease, that crease will build into the center, and then marking my center with chalk. So I'm going to, at the machine, turn this around because I want to start at the bottom and end at the top. So I am going to sew at my uh, regular seam allowance up along this center marking. You could divide this into threes, fours, you could leave it one big pocket, however you want to divide it. Um, you could even add more stitching. I just do one center line, but you could come up one side, come across and down the other, so that way you have two stitches. Whatever works best for you. And I'm just gonna do that single line in the center.
and you want to make sure that you are back stitching well that it is going to hold it because that will be a seam that receives a lot of stress if you're using the pocket um, another option you could do is you could also add some rivets to help hold it in place you can really uh, do multiple things with this pocket however you want to use it best all right so now we have our finished interior slip pocket side we are going to take our finished zipper pocket lining side and we are going to put them right sides together and you are going to align the sides and the bottom and you are going to clip all three edges. So you wanna clip or pin both side seams and this bottom seam. We're not turning our bag through this bottom seam, so you do not leave, need to leave an opening down here. All right, so now on back of the machine, I have all three sides clipped. Because this is the lining, we are going to start at the top we are going to sew at our given seam allowance in the pattern, but then we are going to increase our seam allowance. And it tells you how much to increase it to also in the pattern. Uh, so we need it the same, the beginning seam allowance because we need to match up our sides, but by increasing the seam allowance along the rest of the edges, you are going to make the lining fit tighter. Uh, so you're gonna start at the given, increase go down one side sew along the bottom at that increased seam allowance you're going to continue up the far side at the larger seam allowance and when you get about two inches towards the top you are going to branch out to that smaller original seam allowance um, so I'm going to do that and then I'll show you what it should look like as well. And make sure you're backstitching at the beginning and the end. Alright, so now on the back of the machine, I have all three sides clipped. Because this is the lining, we are going to start at the top. We are going to sew at our given seam allowance in the pattern, but then we are going to increase our seam allowance. And it tells you how much to... All right, so now on the back of the machine, I have all three sides clipped. Because this is the lining, we are going to start at the top we are going to sew at our given seam allowance in the pattern, but then we are going to increase our seam allowance. And it tells you how much to increase it to also in the pattern. Uh, so we need it the same, the beginning seam allowance because we need to match up our sides, but by increasing the seam allowance along the rest of the edges, you are going to make the lining fit tighter. Uh, so you're gonna start at the given, increase go down one side sew along the bottom at that increased seam allowance you're going to continue up the far side at the larger seam allowance and when you get about two inches towards the top you are going to branch out to that smaller original seam allowance um, so I'm going to do that and then I'll show you what it should look like as well. And make sure you're backstitching at the beginning and the end. Alright, so we are going to box our bottom corners the same way we did. And this is actually why we put this um, slip pocket a little bit further up and not on the edge. That way it doesn't get caught and make this bulky. So you're going to line up your side seam with your bottom seam. 
and I am going to just nest them. I'm not going to butterfly it open. And you are going to sew at the larger seam allowance given in the pattern. And just like on the last one, even though this is waterproof canvas, I'm going to do the larger seam allowance and then a smaller one as well. And you're going to repeat that for both sides. Now, before I sew the other side off camera, if you are nesting your seams, that means that one side is turning, is facing one way, and the other side is going the opposite direction. You want to make sure that you are doing the same direction. So this is my bottom seam. So when I separate this one to line up the sides, because my bottom seam is facing to my left on this side, I need, or my, I get, it's the bottom of my bag, but the top uh, seam allowance I'm looking at. So I wanna make sure that's facing the same direction. So I'm gonna also put it to my left and the bottom one to my right. So that's called nesting and then your center seams should be lined up. So I'm gonna sew this side off camera and do my second set of stitching as well. Okay, I have both corners boxed on the bottom. Um, so now if you want to trim your lining to reduce bulk, you can. The only thing that I do not recommend is at the top part of your lining where we have that smaller stitch length Oh, sorry, I'm not on the camera. So this top part of the lining where we have that smaller stitch length, do not trim up here. Start a little bit down. Leave yourself some space because we are going to be opening these in the next step. All right, so I'm gonna try to show you this. The bag is so big. Um, on this part, we had already marked our centers, but if you didn't do that step, mark them now. And then this is our lining. You are going to turn the lining so it is right sides facing out. And it doesn't need to be like all the way pushed out along the bottom as long as the top is fully uh, open. You are now going to grab your exterior portion of the bag. If you have not already marked your centers of the top, um, you wanna mark your centers. And you are going to have this with the wrong side facing out. So all my pockets are on the inside and the straps are down inside the bag. So now what you are going to do is you are going to take the lining piece that is right sides facing out and put it inside of your exterior. And then you are just going to, this is why I didn't have you trim the sides, you are going to butterfly them open and match up the side seams um, if you did the D-ring option, I leave mine longer because, um, it gives more, like, less likely to fray apart in, inside your bag. Uh, so I just kind of, like, visually look and try to line up the center the best I can. So I always start at, uh, my side seams. And because I have the 
D-ring connector strap. I am going to pin on or clip on both sides of it. And then I'm going to do the same for the other side. Again, opening up the interior seam allowance or yeah, the seam allowance, I'm butterflying that open. And again, clipping this close. And then you can, I always um, tug on the sides to try to like straighten it up. Here's my center mark. You are going to line up your centers. And then you're gonna do the same for this side. Um, actually, let me do it now. However, we are going to be turning through this top. Um, so I usually on one side, even though I clip the center, I usually leave a space anywhere from like eight to 10 inches, which is, seems kind of big, but because I'm using waterproof canvas and this bag is so large, this is the hole that you are going to be turning through. So you wanna make sure that you leave yourself a big enough space that you can pull your entire bag through this. So then you're just gonna go around and clip the rest And you're gonna use as many clips as necessary. Because you definitely don't want this um, slipping. Then you'll have like a bulk extra fabric somewhere. And it's very important that your straps are down inside of the bag. They should be between your exterior and interior pieces. All right, and once you have this fully clipped, you are going to take it to your machine and you are going to sew around the entire top portion of the bag at the given seam allowance. You might have to maneuver it on your machine to get it to fit. All right, so now we're at the final step. We are going to sew around the top part. So I am going to start at the um, one side of my opening of my turning hole here. So I'm gonna start on this side. Now you may find it easier to, if you have a cylinder arm, you can just like put it over it. Um, I have a removable piece that I could do, but what I find easiest for me is to sew from the inside. So I'll kind of show you before I get sewing, but because of the camera angle and how I need to maneuver the bag, I'm not sure if it will block it. And I'm really taking my time to line up the seam allowance um, to make sure that this is accurate. Okay, so as I get sewing, this is going to block what I'm doing. So I'm gonna explain first. Um, I'm gonna backstitch in the beginning of the end and I'm gonna sew around the top. And how I do it with my machine is that this bag is so big that I almost like, I can literally like prop it around my sewing machine and I just hold it so it doesn't get or bump into any of the thread that's coming through or any of the pieces that are moving up or down. Um, so I can show you a little bit, but again, the camera's gonna block it as soon as I get to really having to maneuver. And 
and take your time. Make sure that you are um, trying to stay as accurate as possible. When you get to your D-ring connectors, if you want to um, backstitch over them a little bit and add uh, a little bit more security to them, you can do that. So now I'm coming up to where I really need to turn the bag. So this is where I am going to start maneuvering it around my machine. So I'm gonna slide my camera and show you. So if you are looking from this angle, it is going to look like this. Actually, I wonder, I'm gonna try sewing like this so you can see. Now we're at the final step. We are going to sew around the top part. So I am going to start at the um, one side of my opening of my turning hole here. So I'm going to start on this side. Now you may find it easier to, if you have a cylinder arm, you can just like put it over it. Um, I have a removable piece that I could do, but what I find easiest for me is to sew from the inside. So I'll kind of show you before I get sewn. All right, so now what we are going to do, we left our turning hole. We are going to gently reach inside. I usually try to grab for the bottom and pull our bag through. But you want to be extremely gentle because we are pulling through the top. We absolutely do not want to bust these seams open. So take your time. That's why I always leave a little bit of a larger hole. I'd rather have to sew more of it up than struggle trying to turn my bag through. So now what we are going to do, we left our turning hole. We are going to gently reach inside. I usually try to grab for the bottom and pull our bag through. But you wanna be extremely gentle because we are pulling through the top. We absolutely do not wanna bust these seams open. So take your time. That's why I always leave a little bit of a larger hole. I'd rather have to sew more of it up than struggle trying to turn my bag through. Once I have it turned so the lining is um, mostly out, I stick my hand inside my turning hole and I pop out the box corners. Oh, I have like a little thread here that got stuck. I'm gonna have to trim that after. And for me, it's just easier while I can actually fit my hand inside to really take the time 
to make sure that all the seams are poked out. And then we are going to, you can see my linings on top, my exterior on the bottom. You are going to stuff your lining inside. And I pull up a little bit to make sure that. All right, so I have clipped all the way around my bag. This is where my opening was, and you can't even tell once I have it clipped. Uh, so I'm gonna take this to the machine to sew. Something that I didn't say um, when you are aligning it, to me it doesn't really matter what side I have, the zipper pocket versus the slip pocket, but if you want them on a specific side, you are going to, when you stick them into each other, you want it facing that side. So if you want the zipper pocket facing the exterior zipper, you're gonna align it on that same side and vice versa. For me, I have the slip pockets on the interior and exterior on the same. Um, but for me, it doesn't normally matter, but if you have a preference, um, you can do that when you're attaching. All right, so we are in the final steps. For me, um, for the top stitch, I put my stop, top stitch length. I just switched to my regular zipper foot and I prefer to top stitch from the exterior side of the bag. Uh, to, to me, it's just so I can make sure it's even and especially because I'm using black and this is neon thread. This bag is so um, big and the fabric is so loose that I can kind of like pull this and turn this over um, in order to fit it under my machine. But if you have like a cylinder arm or if you pull off the bottom to be able to go around, uh, you could, you could top stitch from the inside. That's just not my preference. So I am going to do it from the outside. And I also back stitch in the beginning and the end. I am going to try to start in, um, like a corner here. What you could do is... I guess if you started where your opening was, um, you could leave tails and not backstitch and when then you get to the end, kind of like bury your thread between the layers. Um, but that is a lot of work and more tedious for me. So I am just gonna backstitch and in the beginning and the end, like I normally would. And I'm gonna do it close to the D-ring connector so it is not, um, centered on my bag, it's not as noticeable. And I like to hand crank over the D-ring connector. It just helps my machine have more even stitches, uh, especially because I'm using a domestic, even though it is still a strong machine. And then I'm just, you can see I'm maneuvering the bag as I'm going along. get a nice top stitch while also filming this. And you wanna make sure that your handles, you are pulling them down out of the way. You do not wanna stitch over your handles.
All right, so we are in the final steps. For me, um, for the top stitch, I put my top, top stitch length. I just switched to my regular zipper foot and I prefer to top stitch from the exterior side of the back. Uh, to, to me, it's just so I can make sure it's even and especially because I'm using black and this is neon thread. This bag is so um, big and the fabric is so loose that I can kind of like pull this and turn this. All right, so we are on our last step, making the crossbody strap. Um, I have my webbing cut to 60 inches. That's what I prefer for the length. Um, I am short, but I do have some weight on me and I find that this works really well for my size and for taller people. Um, so you can adjust it to whatever you prefer, but I have found 60 inches is a good number for me. So we are going to take our slider. Both of these are one and a half inch webbing um, and one and a half inch hardware. This is webbing that we carry in the shop in both the one and a half inch and one inch. Um, so, okay, we are going to go over, up and over the center bar. And then I'm going to, I don't, I don't want the raw edge exposed. And I did take a lighter to burn the edges so that way it won't fray. I'm going to fold it once on itself and then bring it down. So it's going to look like this. So I, I usually sew with this up so I can see, and I like to do two lines of stitching. I'm going to sew one about one eighth an inch from the edge, and then one about a quarter inch away. Um, and I'm just going to use my regular presser foot. You can um, use a zipper foot and try to get as close to this bar as possible, um, but I think the distance I have is good. Okay, so I have the first about an eighth an inch from the edge and I'm going to do the quarter inch away now. I'm just going to cut as close as possible, trimming my threads. And you could also take um, a lighter if you're using like a poly uh, webbing, I mean a poly thread and just burn down the tails. All right, so now I'm going to make sure that this side is facing up and I'm going to stretch out, make sure nothing is twisted. I am going to take my slider and put it through. So now if I follow this all the way through, you see it's not twisted. So now I'm going to come back to my slider. I'm going to go up from the left hand side over that movable center bar 
down on the right side. And I am going to pull through. And you'll see that this uh, snap hook will hang there. So now I'm going to flip it so it's upside down and come to my end. Again, you wanna make sure that you are keeping everything going the same way. So I am going to attach my second sap hook. I'm, so I'm gonna slide it on. I'm gonna fold over the edge about three quarters of an inch. You can fold it, give or take. Um, that part doesn't really matter. And then I'm gonna fold it over one more time. And just like I sewed for the slider, I'm going to sew two lines again, one at an eighth of an inch and one at a little, a quarter or a little bit more. Make sure that you are back stitching in the beginning and the end. You want to make sure that it is nice and secure. And for this, I'm just sewing the two lines. Uh, you could use rivets, you could sew a line and keep the edge raw, but then add a um, strap end to it. Uh, so however you would like to do this. And again, I'm just gonna burn my tails and make sure that they are close enough it just cleans it up a little bit. All right, so then I can flip this back and we have our cross body strap and we can add that to our bag. All right, everybody, we just finished up our pool tote. I hope you really enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed sewing along with me. Uh, let me know what you think. If you have any questions, comments, please feel free to leave them below. And I hope you enjoy this bag as much as I do.